So in a lot of the autonomic cases that we see, we see a very important overlap between what people describe as dizziness and lightheadedness. My name is Dr. Nathan Kaiser I'm with the Kaiser Center, and we specialize in helping people with autonomic and concussion-related problems. A lot of people that come in will describe what they feel is, is dizziness. That's kind of a tough word because dizziness can mean a lot of things to a lot of people. In the classical autonomic sense, a lot of times people are really describing lightheadedness, or lightheadedness kind of tends to go with a subset of things that we would call hypoperfusion or cerebral hypoperfusion. What that means is a decrease in the amount of blood flow or oxygenation that's coming to the brain. So you can imagine if you kind of turn the dial down on the brain, what kind of symptoms you would have. You feel lightheaded. You might feel like you're going to pass out, very tired, very weak, having a hard time thinking or concentrating, kind of feeling brain fog. Sometimes people even notice that their vision gets blurry or it's dim, or they'll start to have even a little bit of tunnel vision. People will describe muffled hearing or like their ears are full or even ringing in their ears. Like this is one kind of subset set of symptoms that we see that tend to go with hypoperfusion or lightheadedness. But then also we'll see more of a vestibularly based dizziness. And this might be where I feel like I'm on a boat, right? Like things are rocking. Or it might be when I feel like I'm spinning or like the world is spinning around me. And sometimes we see that these two things overlap. And that's really important because when we think about orthostatic tolerance, orthostasis is the difference in laying down to getting up, which is highly dependent on the vestibular system. So you could see how I could have a set of vestibular symptoms, and then I could also have a set of hypoperfusion symptoms where I'm not getting blood flow to my head, but the cause of those two things could overlap and actually be related. And we see these in cases all the time, especially with people that have problems with the perception of gravity, even just sitting in place, riding in a car, going up an escalator or up and down an elevator. People that have symptoms in those ways may also find that they have POTS type or autonomic type symptoms that relate to their vestibular problems. And we like to do a full vestibular workup overlaid with our autonomic workup and that helps us to be able to see how those two things fit together. We saw a case about two weeks ago where we looked at someone that wasn't able to ride in a car. They drove from another state on their way up here. There was a ton of anxiety around that. What they noticed was that they had a hard time being able to look out of the window, had a hard time sitting up, felt like they should be laying down. And then when we look at them in the office, even just having them stand and close their eyes, they tilt and fall over. When when they try to move their eyes looking at something close to looking at something far, they get stuck and their eyes jerk around and they feel nauseous and like a pit in their stomach. So these are huge indicators that help us to be able to clue in to when maybe we really need to dial into looking at that vestibular system as a function of what's going on to create the hypoperfusion or the, the change in the blood flow to the brain. To recap, we want to look at both separate them out. Do we have hypoperfusion? Do we have a vestibular-based dizziness? Do we have both? And that can help us understand how do we need to evaluate someone, but then more specifically, how do we go about treating that so we can resolve the underlying problem and get them back on the road again? I hope that helps. Leave a comment, send us a message, carry your pigeon, whatever you like. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks.